Hi everyone. My name is Namjoon Cho again. Today I'm going to give you a talk, and then uh, it's not just research talk, but this whole talk, the title From Top Poland to Soft Matter. I'm hoping that I'm going to give you inspiration for this research, how you really actually think, and then how you actually think and see the object outside the box. And then as you see that the whole history of material innovation, you can clearly see that the development align with the, uh, those ages. That is including stone ages, bronze ages, iron ages, and so on, plastic ages, biotechnology ages, nanotechnology, right now for the industry generation, is, which is information knowledge age. However, indeed, if you actually see that, the early version of uh, uh, material innovation would happen in Asia around the Iron Age. As you know, every day we're using paper. Ever since chemical industry revolution, including plastic industry revolution, all the materials developed from US, UK, German, and so on. Now at this moment, 2020, 2019, we develop or we presenting probably pro material. Why material science and material innovation or fundamental material science and material innovation is important because innovation occurred by repurpose natural material to create new function. Let's take a look. Everybody, every single one or every single policymaker, strategist, government agencies, and all those people just busy thinking about innovation, they visit Silicon Valley. So what is Silicon Valley? Silicon Valley at this moment, two talent basically start this whole platform, HP, Hewlett and Packard. 1939 was a farming, in a farmer place. You know, this is a seven years ago, the synthesis of a single crystal silicon wafer from the sand, which is showing the quartz, and that quartz is the material who build the building. And that they can happen beginning of the, this digital transformation and today Internet of Things era. As you clearly see that in here, the one very, very simple material, we developed the processing material science impact transform or repurpose from one material to another that create the multifunctionality. Today, there is an outstanding need to develop new class of material from the nature potential for societal good. That key feature, we need to develop material eco-friendly sustainable, and very importantly, multifunctional. So big question is, can we repurpose multifunctional pollen to develop new class of innovative bio-inspired material? And then in the, from the plant biology, the pollen is very important function, and it's known as the diamond of the plant world. It's mechanically very sturdy, very stable. They have four different layer within. And at the very importantly, sustainability perspective it is plentiful, low cost, high quality, very strong and stable. Can it be the material innovation lead by Singapore for the first time? The starting point for the bio inspired it's known as pollen is practically indestructible. And then it's one of the science paper they are published in 2016, only later. Why is those stable? They have a four different layer. One hour layer is pollen cement. They contain with the lipid and protein. 
And the next layer is axon is made up of the sporopolymer, which is very strong and close linked by a polymer, highly physically stable acid which some, as you can see, the function of this pollen is protect the genetic material inside the pollen for the proliferation or in you know, offspring purpose. And in a layer is in time, which composed of, you know, outside is very strong and inside the elastic like cellulose based. And then they play role in the in the nature rule, the rule of nature. Strong, steady, soft and flexible. And then people develop because of this function, people develop pollen as a drug delivery vehicle. Due to it's a, a accessible, very cheap, natural food with a high uniformity. With this, our project objective is repurpose pollen grain for next generation material innovation that enables sustainable, scalable, low cost development for advanced material based on learning from nature, overcoming nature. So we have four different trusts with a great, great team around Singapore and global collaboration as well. Trust one is basically structural property relationship with nature and engineering problem. And then that is the plan scientific perspective as well as engineering perspective. Thrust two is a mechanical basis for the pollen multifunctionality. I mean, it's given that 270,000 different pollen species. In those mechanistic basis, the pollen multifunctionality is very diverse. And also very importantly, in order to translate, engineer the processing of the pollen into the particle and different form, repurpose this pollen as different structure is a very, very important matter. Only you connect based on the uh, fundamental, which is the, we can, we demonstrate it. It can be the particle, it can be gel, and it can be form of paper and also sponge. Trust four is cross-cutting trust, linking structural property with the function of the pollen grain. How we can actually utilize this whole platform to next. Pollen structural property mechanical basis is basically known as, and then what we published recently, which is we identify very simple, like traditional process of a soap making process, which is non-toxic, non very sustainable, simple process. We can actually convert pollen packed into the packet. And then this basically showing that the response by the physiological environment by changing either pH or changing the buffer condition ion, then we actually, you know, directly create this is a multi-physical modeling to do the capturing whole process from the dry grain, initial hydration, how they open the aperture opening, and how they take the water, and fundamentally that leads to the germination, that's the fundamental plant sign. Or, once they dry out, how can I actually avert those germination process? And then that is including the trust is conventional. The most of processing, chemical processing is a petroleum processing based, very complex. But as an engineer nowadays, we don't care that much about what is actually each process step affecting the sustainability of our earth, which is very important. And then if you basically, one of the form, for example, for instance, you wanna make the polyurethane form, which you be using in the kitchen everyday life. And then it's petroleum based, it's a very complex process. 
However, the same sponge we can create with a very simple traditional process. Further develop and understand how the chemical principle can able to sustain the processing, which I believe, especially for this era, very, very important. So this is uh, every engineer or material science known this man. It's basically young modulus versus uh, density of the material. And then conventionally, we, we basically categorize this material as uh, the mechanical strength and so on and so forth so far. In our group and team, demonstrate. You can repurpose single material to different forms. Basically, you transform, adding the value and exceed the natural performance limit. And then hoping that we just start filling the application need. With the different types so far, we demonstrate pollen grain used to use it as a drug delivery can be the microgel or hydrogel, can directly convert to the paper, can directly convert to the further convert to the sponge, and you can mix it. With the hydrogen, you can make the interpenetrate network hydrogen, like plastic like material. With all those innovations, I proudly present the team who are expert in the different field. Number one is basically structural property relationship with the natural and engineering interconnection, lead by the PI. Professor Gao and Professor Xia. And then also we have to understand the fundamental natural science of the plant pollen, which is uh, leading by the mood wheel and Professor Hong from the SBI. And the mechanical basis for the pollen multifunctionality we designed or we working together before for the Professor Zhu Ha Sung and Chang Jin Huang. And then I mentioned emphasis a lot for the engineering processing of the pollen into the particle lead by the Professor Ten Lei Po, and then the uh, Dalton and me yourself. Also, we have a biology specialist, the food nutrition people, taking together how we can actually employ, apply this cross-cutting thrust linking structural property together with the function of the pollen grain. I was thinking when I started studying this one and the fascinating about this material property, then the next question is, hey, why this pollen, this amazing material, no one actually using it for the, from the viewpoint of a, a material scientist? I could think of, you know, when I heard about pollen, I mean, I, I had the same thing. And I had the same question I asked to the, my student, my group, my collaborator, is pollen allergenic? Is it pollen abandoned? Is it affordable? The property is uh, there. And those processing methods is sustainable. How can we collect all? And then with this study, and then I, I study more and more, this is the material for next generation. Then I'm, I'm, I have a confidence. And those pollen-based material, we just start for the first time in the world deeper understanding of the fundamental biomechanics, chemical science and processing of the pollen, and able to unparalleled advancing material science and engineering as an example. And then you can do the same thing with other materials. You know, I simply summarize everything about comparison with other materials. Not only the advantage and disadvantage, but emphasis on the processing in particular, compared with the conventional plastic, cellulose, and the biocomputable material with the chitosan. And those sporo material based from the sporopollen or pollen is very economical, biocompatible, biodegradable, non-toxic, and so on, very abundant. And the very importantly, low energy input and maximum output. That's what we call sustainable processing is 
very much possible. With all that, this is the world's first pollen-based material innovation. Not only using as a, this humble material as a natural on drug capture, and developing fundamental processing, but also we repurpose this hard pollen into the soft matter for the first time with a hefty intellectual property along the line. Program management budget is so we asking direct cost of the 21 million. And then if you clearly see that the, a lot of money is pending to develop next generation talent. Because this effort, we cannot do it just by alone. We need to educate young generation for this uh, material innovation flavor. The, the good thing is that we have a very good support from NTU. And so we have a most of the equipment. It's a very low cost. Only we need is maintenance. The operation cost of material is cheaper than other costs. We can excessively study many different cases of study and that we also plan to educate the PhD student as well. So human resources, so we're going to educate 36 research staff plus three PhD students along the line with the uh, foreign experts, seven different international collaborations plus this whole scheme. Thank you very much. I will take the questions. <clears throat>